Um, this morning we're going to be doing something a little different. Uh, much to, I mean, we're sad that Terry had to, uh, you know, that his sister had problems there in Alaska after the earthquake. But he, obviously, he went to go help her. We're glad that he was able to do that, but we're also glad that it gives the elders a chance to uh, speak to you today. So that's what that's what our goal is today to uh, talk to you about things that uh, that we would like to see and, and our goals here for the next year uh, for 2019 and uh, ways that we can build that firm foundation. So if you'll turn with me to Ephesians 4, uh, we're we're actually gonna read from verse one. So does my, there it goes. Starting with verse one through verse 16. If you have your Bible, please open that up. If not, I'd like you to listen closely. This scripture that I'm reading here um, one of the th- first things we do before we uh, open our elders' meetings and we pray is we read a scripture. And uh, this scripture has probably been read in more elders' meetings since I've been an elder than any other scripture. And it has become one of my favorite scriptures. And so if you listen, listen to what the words say, and there, there's a, a lot of meaning in them and a lot of meaning to the elders. And I think you'll, you'll see some of this as we read it. Okay, Ephesians 4, starting in verse 1. Therefore, I, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another, in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all, who is over all and through all and in all, But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry. For building up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Um, so we have some main goals for, uh, 2019. Um, this is in the bottom. I'm not, I'm not controlling the slides, right? That's all you. So, um, this, um, this part is worship. Um, I asked to do, uh, uh, our information on worship and, um, some of the main goals that we have and, and, uh, we'll, we'll just kind of read these off. Um, they may sound very mechanical, but there are goals that were, were prayed about and we thought about. So, um, on this next slide. Click, click. Okay, um, worship leaders. We um, 
we had talked, we decided that we need to um, uh, really get our worship leaders to be more informative. Um, and not that they're doing a bad job, I'd like to think of that because I'm one of them, but, uh, but um, we are going to uh, uh, have them better equipped. And there are, are schools out there that, that help, there's training. We're going to send Michael Horton and Steve Young uh, to a Worship Leader Institute. Um, they had uh, volunteered after being talked to, and so they were going to do that for us. Um, click. So, um, worship and special services. Um, we have, uh, wow, it's really hard to read that, so I'm going to off here. Uh, goal to very worship, worship presentation to encourage members' awareness. Uh, once a quarter, we're, gonna, we're going to uh, have uh, the situation Joshua and Joel, or, or all the ministers, preach on, on the fifth Sundays. And uh, that worship is to include uh, song service, prayer service, multiple ministers preaching, um, uh, decorating the stage to support worship themes for special occasions or special worship services. We do that when we, um, uh, when we have our, our giving for our, our uh, missions. And, uh, and then click. On the, fifth Sunday, on the fifth Sunday evenings, we are planning on devotionals and food fellowship. So we can get together as a body. Um, we can worship together. We can enjoy a meal together. Uh, that will be opportunities for all the brothers and sisters at Mesa, both the, the Spanish side, the English side, to get together, to connect. And that's what we really want to do um, as a body. And then once a quarter, um, that would be like December 30th, March 31st. I think those dates are planned out, as you can see. Now, um, that's the informational part. It's very, at least very mechanical, okay, and, and you think, well, you know, uh, what does that look like? Well, what will we look like to God is really the question. When we focus as his, his people, as people who worship in spirit and truth, and we engage in our worship, I mean, we are here today to honor and praise the king. So that was the informational part. Let me give you a motivational part to this. Um, Matthew chapter 2, chap, uh, chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. This is when Herod sends out the wise men. And in verse 10 it says, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. When they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary. They worshipped him, worshiped him and they presented gifts. Think about this. When they saw the star, they weren't even at worship yet. And they were, they were filled with joy and they rejoiced. Do we do that in the morning? Think about when we are getting ready to come to church and worship God, are we filled with joy and are we rejoicing? And then we get here and we worship and we offer gifts. Um, let me just leave you with Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hey, Jack, you did great on time. <laughs> God is good? All the time? All the time? God is good. That's great. I'm here to talk to you on education. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Education. One of the things I want to talk about or, or to say, remember the words of Jesus in Matthew uh, chapter 28? He says, teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. And so teaching is very important. And so as we go through education of uh, teaching our children, there's lots of scriptures Jesus called a little child unto him, remember in Matthew 18? And he said, these are the ones that you need to be like. And so we've got to have that, those teachers teaching our little ones. And so I want to talk to you about education. Uh, this may not seem, uh, office to provide new uh, member package for the elders uh, with meeting new members. And so Lots of things that we discuss with them as we'll go through this. Next, follow through to commit new members to attend Bible class, connect groups, one minister, and worship. Very important. We are encouraging all of our new members as they come to commit to attending a connect group and to attending the worship. 
And let me say that this applies to all of us, not just to our new members. It's important that we attend uh, our Bible schools, our Bible study at the time, because that's where you grow at. Next, how to address attendance in Bible class, connect group, and worship. You know, this, is, this has been a struggle since I've been an elder. How do we do this? How do we convince those people to get up an extra five or ten minutes early to get here on time for Bible class? It's tough sometimes. And so let me encourage all of you to be here for Bible class and to also go to connect groups. Next, connect groups. Joshua. Joshua has agreed to do connect groups right now. He's back there not smiling, so, but it's okay. <laughs> we need to strive for more connect groups. And then when a connect group gets large of having 20 to 30 people in there, divide them down and start another one. So be there waiting to say, hey, Joshua, I'll, I'll take care of that. I will uh, volunteer to host a group or to teach a group. So don't be bashful. He's also going to start next uh, a, uh, a care portal uh, and hopefully be to have this committed by 19, uh, February 19. So we need more personal co connection for people in the congregation. And this is one way we can do it through the, is it not up there? Care portal of caring for each other, for caring for each other, because this is in the connect groups. This is where you do. This is where you make your connection uh, in, in that. And so we've got that. The biggest thing is that you have to attend in order to know what's going on within that group. And so let me encourage you again to, to do that. And then next is Bible classes and worship attendance. Just spoke on that, didn't I? Create a plan that will make uh, being late or not attending because it's important. Remember our, our goals for this year and our mission? And it's by seeking Jesus, finding Jesus, and sharing Jesus. And if we're not here, we're not going to be able to do that. You need to learn to find Jesus and seek him and find him and share him. Then you'll be rejoicing because you can share Jesus and not be afraid. That's what Jesus would like for us to do. The next one, CBH and TBH children education continue to develop and improve. There's always improvement, no matter where it's at. We, we need improvement. So we'll, we'll try to get that done, and we'll address that, and to try to complete it by March 1st. Next is VBS for church and community in, in 19. So we've, we want to develop a, a VBS and do outreach with it in our community. It will happen if we'll do it. The kids will come. Next, train and equip teachers, additional teachers needed in all departments, members for more doing, less learning, do more spiritual discipline rather than learning, emphasize on spiritual discipline that we need to be practicing. So let me encourage you that. We need to be practicing uh, spiritual uh, discipline. And so we'll have lessons on that from time to time. Then the, uh, the next one is the adult Bible class. Adult Bible class, uh, we're going to have student training uh, uh, for learning there and set up the next uh, learning cycle, uh, why it's important to learn. And then also we will be doing, which we've already announced, we will be doing our instead of going by quarters, we'll go every two months for the teachers 
hopefully this will en enhance or encourage more teachers by doing the two months. You don't have to do, th you can do eight weeks instead of 13. And so that should help us. Uh, another uh, teaching class to begin uh, Sunday morning in January. So we'll be doing that. So this is education. Lord bless you guys. I'd like to read from Philippians uh, chapter 3, verses 7 through 11, where Paul speaks to the Philippians and to us today. He says, but whatever were gains to me, I can now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. He says, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection, participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in faith in his death, and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. We have for you this year in the areas of service and evangelism, uh, two things. They are combined because they are, both of them are evangelistic and are works. The first one is Care Portal and other services through Connect Groups. We are wanting all the members of the church and all groups to be service focused. Care Portal gives us the opportunity to be in the homes of those who have needs. Care Portal uh, is a nonprofit organization that gets its referrals from the government, like social services, and then the state, the, uh, and then those referrals are passed, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. The state recognizes that these families need more than uh, what the law allows uh, them to provide. Uh, the Care Portal organization gets those referrals, they pass them on to churches we are able to go online and choose the ones we feel we can accomplish. We go then are able to go to the home, meet the need, and build a relationship, and pray with the people, teach them the Bible, and of course, we're able to invite them to come to the worship with us. The result is the children are able to stay in the home, which is where they belong, and the state recognizes that as well as we do. But in completion, it is a winning situation for everyone involved. Our second work we have is a homework and an after-school program with English as a second language. This is a joint effort of both the Spanish and the English church. This program has been successful in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, there, the school grades have improved. Uh, the ESL classes have led to many uh, new Christians coming to the Lord. It is being organized by Edison Cavedo and it was strong, requires a strong English speaking participation. We are one church here and, and we want both sides to be working together to grow, simply to grow the kingdom. It's something we can do. So brothers and sisters, we all know we live in difficult times. Uh, we're interested in God's word has been lacking and at times we're simply criticized for being Christians. Satan and his agencies will try to discredit us, they'll try to marginalize us and dismiss us as really having any say in what is a good and a righteous life. We cannot allow them to do that to us. We must become more bold, we must be more passionate about knowing Christ. We have no choice but to say, and join me in saying, because I'm committing myself to say, I, yes, I want to know Christ and the power of his rising. Yes, I am willing to participate in suffering. And yes, I will be like him in faith because I want to attain the resurrection of the dead. And with these words in our hearts, let's go out here in this year of 2019 and sow the seeds of faith, water that seed so that God can give the increase. So in water, that's what you and I do, God gives the increase and it will come if we sow that seed. Just remember, we are his people, we are his voice, we have his authority behind us. No fear, preach the gospel of love 
and let's live it to the fullest. All the people say, wow. Fellowship, wow. You know, that's one of our ministries here, and we got some dynamic deacons to take care of that. There's a guy named Glenn something. Calvin, Calvin Glenn, can you stand up, Calvin? He's, he's one of our, our fellowship deacons. Love him and appreciate him. Another guy out here named John Boulay. Some, John, would you stand up? Wow, all right, thank you. All right, sit down, guys. These, these guys head up our, our, our fellowship ministry, and, and, and just, I, I just want to thank them for what they do. I think that's fantastic. And, you know, this is your idea and my idea of fellowship. What is it? Food. <laughs> we got a big room down here at the other end of the hall. We call that the fellowship hall. Why do we call that fellowship hall? Because we, yeah, we eat. Wow. And so we think fellowship is fun and games and activities and, and picnics. And, well, that's probably right. But I'm not sure that's God's idea of fellowship. Here's what the uh, New Testament says. This Greek word koinonia is used 19 times in the New Testament. And it's translated into words like fellowship or sharing or joint participation. The Greek uses it to describe marriage. How many are in marriage? Yeah, two. And they do what? Uh, they share. Talk about a, a partnership. In, in Luke chapter 5 and verse 10, it talks about James and John were in partnership with Simon. They were what? They were in a business partnership. That was fellowship. And of course, we love Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in what? You all listening? Let's try it again. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, okay. And they were continuing steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in? All right! That's where we're trying to get an idea of what God's idea of fellowship is because it ain't all just eating. Here's what God says about fellowship, okay? In Philippians chapter 4, in verse 15, Paul says, no church shared, that's that word koinonia, with me in the matter of giving and receiving, but you along. So he praised the, the, Philippi, the Philippian church because they what? Shared in evangelism, in finances, and in service. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 16. Paul says what? It's not the cup of blessing which we bless a sharing, that's that word, koinonia, in the blood of Christ. It's not the Bread, which we break a sharing, koinonia, in what? The body of Christ. So when we had communion earlier, we did what? We had this sharing in worship and spirituality. And then Philippians chapter 4 and verse 14, Paul says, you Philippians did what? You've done well to koinonia with what? With me in my affliction. So fellowship is what? Evangelism, finances, service, worship, spirituality, and what? Suffering and persecution. So I'm walking through Costco last week, having fellowship with 500 people. A bunch of old fuds. And they're pushing their dumb cart. I didn't see a smile anywhere. I saw no joy. I didn't hear a whole lot of laughter. They were, mm, must be from Iowa. Mm, people from Minnesota. What's this? What was this fellowship? There was no fellowship at all at Costco. Yesterday I went to the old flood market down there in, on Signal Butte. Again, fellowship. Here's all these old people walking around looking at all this stuff, man in China. And, I don't get the idea of fellowship. What is fellowship? It's not these empty pews. Did you notice this? Are these pews in? That's not the fellowship. Fellowship is what? All of us. Look at we got smile. <laughs> look at these smiles. Can you see all this? That's what? That's this joint sharing, this joint participation, this marriage of all these 450 people doing what? The same thing together. That's the Mason Church of Christ. That's not Costco, and that's not the old food market. If you look at your bulletin on the way home tonight, or this morning, 24 ministries on the back of this. How many of those involve fellowship? How many of them don't? What we want to encourage you and me and all of us to do is what? Encourage Calvin and Jonathan to expand what? 
fellowship to involve all of us in those 24 ministries to do what? To grow the body of Christ. And so let's come up with activities and maybe a committee or maybe some volunteers. How about Jonathan and Calvin being overwhelmed today with 400 volunteers say, hey, I, I want to help. Do what? Well, do more praying together. Or maybe you want to do more sharing together. Or maybe we can do something to get this affection that we have for one another. We can, you know, it, it's, if we're sitting in a pew with only one person, there's not a whole lot of fellowship. Is there, Steve? How much fellowship you have in there? You, you notice that? Wouldn't it be neat if we just took out half the pews? What would happen? We'd all have to sit next to somebody, and then we'd have some what? What was that word? Fellowship. Fellowship. Sharing God's grace together. Trusting God to work with one another. So a fellowship is, we think about it this morning, is what? Sharing together in the things of God. Thank you. Just so you know, they saved the best for last. <laughs> the thrilling dynamic and exciting world of facilities and technology. <laughs> when we were talking about dividing these out, I quickly volunteered for this one out of the goodness of my heart. I honestly told them, I don't want any of you to be stuck with that. And then we talked about it. Now I'm making this part up. Totally a joke. But we decided to vote and continue paying the electric bill. <laughs> You're all glad for that, right? Oh, yeah. Facilities and technology have actually been part of the life of the body of Christ since day one. It's not the glamorous front of the page things that we think about, but we really need them. We have these buildings to meet in. We now have this so you can hear me because if that wasn't there, you wouldn't hear me. My voice is not that, that really loud and carrying. But remember on the first day of Pentecost, when the church added all those people, suddenly there were a whole group of people, and what were they going to do? If you read a little further in the book of Acts, you'll find they met in the temple. They took advantage of the facilities that were available. Their technology for lighting in those days was oil lamps. And it wasn't long before Paul was hopping on a ship and traveling around the world to share the gospel. Our technology has continued to grow, and we as elders, we actually consider those things. We talk about some kind of technology and facilities at almost every elders meetings because it's important. It's often in the background, but there are people taking care of this all the time. It's one of those thankless jobs. So when you do see those people that do those things, thank them because they keep all this running for us. Now, what, what part does this have to do with you and what is that to do with the body of Christ? Think about how much it enhances our worship. That's the whole point. There is so much technology out there, we could get carried away with technology for its own sake. I just want to have the newest. We want the best. We want the, the most advanced. And that's not what we think at all. We're always looking at what is it going to do to enhance our worship. I know uh, studying church history at one point, long, long ago, printed song books were a big deal. And they met some opposition because, well, that's not the way we've always done it. But now, you know what? We don't hardly do it that way anymore again. Once again, the printed song book is, uh, we kind of use it, kind of don't, because we have this screen. So where that comes down to you is for things that you think of, you, you see of, that you hear of, feel free to let us know. I heard about this. I saw this somewhere. And if it's something that can enhance our worship, then we want to embrace that. We know of the scriptures, and just I'll paraphrase a few of them. Worship in spirit and in truth. That's where we, that's where we want to be. Something that can help us focus on that. I personally love the screen with the songs because then your head is up you're looking around and I don't know if some of you that sit by me you might wonder once in a while why is he just always looking around I like to see my brothers and sisters singing and see the smiles on their faces 
And, and that helps us do that. The other things that we have, of course, our sound system. We have the ability to record these. If you're homesick, unless we have a glitch with the internet or something, you can watch this on your computer, and people do. So the technology can be a wonderful thing, and we want to keep that up. And we're always looking to advance and grow those areas that can help us uh, encourage, edify, speak to one another in love, all those wonderful things we're supposed to do in our worship. So we want to encourage you to continue giving us those ideas, and we do get them. So uh, don't feel like if you're offering that, that you're the only one. We hear those things all the time, and we're looking into new things constantly. So think of all these plans that we've all shared today, the things we're looking forward to in the next year. It's, it's pretty exciting when you look at it all together. And of course, uh, some things are more exciting, more glamorous than others, but all of it is necessary to build up the body of Christ. Thank you. Well, I hope that the one thing you got from all of us talking is that our whole purpose is we're here for you, but number one, we're here to try to do what we can to bring unity to all of us where we can come closer together and closer to serving God, to be better servants. Um, and so we have a lot of things that we have to consider when we meet and we talk about. And, uh, but what our goal of today was to share it with you. And of course, you know, we talked about things like attendance, how important it is for you to be here. You know, one of the things of the scripture we talked about is how we had some, we were given evangelists, you know, and we have Terry and Edison and Joshua and Joel. We have shepherds, and you've heard from us this morning. Uh, we have teachers, and as I look out here, I can see so many different people that have helped teach here. Well, he gave, all of the, gave us all of these things so that we could, why? He told us to build up the body, to bring us closer together in unity so that we can become more and more like Christ. So to be able to take advantage of those things, you have to be here. And so, and to participate and be part of the connect groups that we're working on and all of that. And so the whole idea is that we can become more and more like Jesus. So this morning, if <clears throat> there's anyone here this morning that uh, feels like they need to come forward for prayers, we're here. If for some reason um, you need to come forward, ask for forgiveness or that you have something that you feel like you need to rep repent on that's on your heart, then we're here for you this morning. Or maybe you've ch decided that you, it's that time to put Jesus on in baptism. And we're here to help you with that also. So at this time, if you, we're going to stand and sing. <clears throat> 